Philly's still in fairly lousy shape, but don't tell that to traders that are betting on consumer stocks. Howard Linden of StockTwits joining me today. And, you know, it's very interesting that, uh, you know, some very well-known consumer companies that you think might struggle uh, in what's still a, a very down-type economy doing quite well. I mean, companies ranging from Fossil and Movado, you know, Dr. Pepper, Snapple. These are all stocks at 52-week highs, Crocs. What's your take on, on how consumer stocks have held up well in what's still not a great economy? We had a two-year recession. We can go back to any recession, maybe three years. It could have been three and a half. Who cares? We are now officially not in a recession. And what I mean by that, there are sectors of the economy. Forget how banks are performing and, and certain parts of the economy. Retail are stronger than ever. Those that survived, survived. They're stronger, whether it's a mattress roll-up or whether it's Nike or whether it's even Johnson & Johnson in the consumer play, which is Band-Aids and all kinds of other glue and, and personal products, or whether it's Chipotle's or whether it's Lululemon. Uh, these are consumer brands that have gotten stronger than ever. They're paying less for lease prices. They are faster growing overseas. Netflix, 28 more Latin American countries. Weren't the short sellers just focused on American numbers? I mean, forget about it. How do you keep up? Does it just really show in your mind that even in uh, a, you know, a, a somewhat sluggish economic environment, you can find good consumer companies because you have to look beyond the U.S. too. There are emerging markets. You talk about Netflix and Latin America, emerging markets that are, are starting to grow and those can be great markets for consumer giants as well. Yeah, I mean, you got to remember that people from Texas think global travel is Arkansas. And so that worked for a long time. But global travel is really Latin America, China, Russia. And we can't, we don't have the metrics. At a time in the industry where 15,000 analysts have been laid off from work from Goldman Schlock and Schmorgan Schmanley and <laughs> Shee Bank, what we've had here is more companies globally need analysts. And so while the remaining analysts scramble to cover 50 stocks and how they work in America, these companies have expanded across oceans, etc. And we don't have the metrics, we don't have the measurement tools to measure how fast these companies can grow, how they're using LinkedIn to recruit internationally in one fraction of the amount of time that it takes a brand to grow just nationally 10 years ago. Forget it. There's no rules. There's no metrics. Doesn't mean you should enjoy it. Doesn't mean you have to chase stocks. But if you have to do anything, don't short stocks. Just stand aside. You've, uh, you've been on fire today, very inspiring. Uh, you know, we might have to use the uh, seven-second delay for your moniker for uh, that bank with the ticker symbol C, but uh, I'm in love with it, so, uh, you know, good stuff there. To wrap up, I just wanted to get your thoughts on whether or not you think there's really any consumer trend that's driving many of these stocks higher. It's hard to find because on the low end you have, you know, soft drink companies like Hanson and Dr. Pepper doing well. And, you know, those are the stodgy consumer staples you'd expect to do well in a slow economy. But, you know, Fossil and Movado also at 52 week highs, that's a little bit more on the, the luxury discretionary side. So is it really just a simple case of looking for quality companies as opposed to bigger picture trends? Well, that's a great question. Hard one for me to answer because I don't step into Fossil, yet I see so many people wear Fossil watch, and then I continue to shake my head, why would you buy a Fossil watch? So sometimes you just can't understand every trend. What I do understand and what people need to sit back and understand is there's this new wealth economy, and it's, you know, it may just be a sliver of this whole global economy, but they aspire to be something. In 20 years, the uh, streets of America will be littered with a street, not that has a McDonald's and uh, clothing chains of, of 20 years ago, but it'll be a Lulu with a Panera Bread, a P.F. Chang's, uh, a Nike store, uh, a Pinkberry, and the cool chain associated with that. It is being repurposed. And there'll be an Apple store with a Genius Bar making the shopping experience completely different. That's what I think the market is trying to price in. And that's why it's expensive, because a lot of the bets will be wrong. But that is where the money is being laid out right now. Great. All right, Howard, thank you so much. We'll do this again next week. But just very quickly, in honor of the new cloud computing ETF, SKYY, not the vodka that debuted today, please give us your cloud dance. Thank you so much. Oh, wait a minute. There's a Lulu dance. Down dog, down dog, down dog. Yes, a combination of yoga and the cloud dance. Namaste. I need a burrito. I need a burrito dance. I need a burrito dance.